Hi and welcome to this tutorial. This is uh, part two in a uh, quick little series about making a china cabinet. Now in the first section, and uh, you might have already gone through that, we created a um, very simple uh, bookcase and uh, the bookcase was, let's see, I think it worked out to be about 43 inches tall and um, 36 inches wide. I'm actually just really quickly recreating that bookcase right now. Uh, because I don't have one and um, here we go and uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use a few simple little functions to put some uh, doors on it and uh, maybe a little door knob and some some feet and uh, well, well we'll see how it goes so basically we have a bookcase that is made up of four different uh, boxes and uh, or six different boxes two for the sides four different shelves and um, my shelves aren't exactly lined up perfectly right now but we'll get there in just a second and um, and it looks something like this oh we have to put a back on it so let me just quickly put my back on and then we're ready to go so there's my back and uh, all of these are going to be about one in thickness so all the boards are the same size and uh, there we go there's the back now what we're going to start with is we're going to make a door. We know that this uh, bookcase is a total of 36 inches wide. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make the, the door and we're going to make it in the in the left viewport. So you can maximize your left viewport, Alt-W. And um, this bookcase here, <clears throat> we, we, we want it to stay, but we, we want it out of the way. So I'm just going to select the whole thing. And I'm going to um, go to my display panel along the top tab here. And I'm going to freeze these objects. So freeze, freeze selected. There we go. It turns them gray. I can still kind of see them. Good enough. I'll go to my create panel, go to the shapes and go to rectangle. Now I'm just going to use uh, my, my, um, my corners here as a guideline. Um, I'm not worried too much about everything being absolutely perfect at this point. I can always fix stuff up later on. Overall, it's going to have a width of probably about 18 and a height of something like 44. This is just a, a plain old rectangle. Okay. Then I'm going to turn off the start new shape and I'm going to put another rectangle in here. Now this is going to be one of the doors or one of the windows of my china cabinet. That's good enough. And then let's go to circle and I'm going to try really hard to start in the middle of that rectangle. And uh, I'm going to make it about that big. Beautiful. So all I've made so far is one big rectangle and um, another smaller rectangle and a circle. Okay, uh, now all of these shapes over here should all be part of the same shape at this point. Okay, if you go into sub-object spline, you'll still be able to select them individually. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to grab these two, the circle and the small rectangle, and boolean them together. So I'm going to go into sub-object spline. Okay, so uh, select and go into the modify panel of this uh, group of shapes you've just made. Turn on sub-object spline, either from the plus sign or down here from the little red squiggly, and uh, pull up a little bit. And um, let's see, we're going to go to Boolean. And so what we want to do is we want to uh, put a create a union between these two shapes. So we're going to go Boolean, and I'm going to hopefully it's going to work. I'm going to click on my circle, and voila, there we go. We have a nice little nice little archway. If yours doesn't work. Try just moving that circle, a pixel to the left, pixel to the right, pixel up, pixel down. The, um, the vertex points should all be overlapping so that when you make it, you, you want to be as precise as possible. If you're not perfectly precise, it might not totally work for you, but with a little shifting around, uh, it should be fine. Now, you can turn off Boolean. Okay, so now we have a shape here, and that's a very nice little sort of uh, door, um, uh, window in our door. I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to make another one. So drag it over like that. Very good. And then I'm going to hold on control to get them both and shift again and drag them down on the Y axis. Now you can sort of decide where exactly you want to put these, um, uh, these, these windows. You can shrink them. You can make them a little bigger. Really, I just want to show you the basic process. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I can turn off sub object spline and um, I'm going to now extrude my door a little bit. I'm only going to extrude it a tiny touch. So with the um, drop down list, I can hit E for extrude and there's extrude and I'm going to extrude it an amount of one. 
good enough. Um, let's just see how that looks. If you Alt W to uh, get out of your uh, single view, you can see there's my door. It's it's kind of inside my bookcase. No problem. I can just let's go to my front view and move it forward on the uh, on that axis. I see that um, I don't know what it is. Maybe my number lock isn't turned on. There we go. Um, but this isn't working before, so now I'm just gonna extrude it one. There it is. Okay, now when you create a door, and um, I guess we can do this in the perspective viewport. When you create a door, uh, you want it to hinge from a certain place. Right now, the um, pivot point is in the middle, so that's no good, right? I don't want my door to hinge from there. Uh, what I want to do is I want it to hinge from, from the edge. Um, whether or not I build in hinges and I get that detailed, that's going to be up to you. But um, we want to have our door hinge from the right place. So uh, in order to get there, just go to your hierarchy panel, make sure your door is selected, go to the hierarchy tab, and uh, pivot is fine. Click on effect pivot only. Okay, and there's, there's your pivot. Make sure you get your move tool and just grab it on the Y axis and drag it over. This might be easier to do in the uh, left viewport. Um, you want it to be right on the edge. Okay, and uh, I'll go back to my perspective again. Okay, and... Uh, and that looks pretty good. Got flipped around here. There we go. Okay. So now, once uh, that is all the way over, you can turn off Effect Pivot Only. And now, if you rotate the door, uh, you'll see that it rotates, um, opens and closes in the right, in the right place. Great. Um, okay. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. And Alt W. Okay. I need a second door. Uh, we've made our one door and we want our second one and we don't want to do all the work. Uh, so if I held down shift and just grabbed it and did the, the regular old copy instance reference, um, that would be a problem because my door would open at the same side. Uh, what I can do instead is I can go up to the top menu and get the mirror tool and I just click on that. And what I want to do is I want to make an instance of this door. Okay. Um, I want to do it on the Y axis. Okay. But I've got to adjust my offset. Now, um, if you hold down the control key when you do your offset, the number spinner goes a lot faster. And I'm just going to go as far as I can over. Minus 37 is probably right. Actually, I think minus 36 is going to be the right number. Um, there we go. And OK. Uh, now I've got two doors. And this door opens this way. Whoa, uh, grab two axes by accident. There it is. Uh, that one opens that way. That's great. And the other one opens the other way. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so there's our doors and they open correctly. I guess the next thing to do is, would be to make a very simple doorknob. So why don't we do that for a second? And that's probably about as far as we'll go today. Um, switch over to... Um, so you can see all four views. And we want to look at this from the side view. So I'm going to go into my front viewport and Alt W that. Uh, I'm going to go to the Create Panel and I'm going to go to Align. And I can make this really nice and large right now. Um, I'm going to make one half of the profile of a uh, doorknob. And um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to sort of start here. I'm going to make this huge. Um, like this. Like this. Now this is half a doorknob. And I'll go like that. I'll even make it a little fancy. And I'll go to there and to there. Perfect. Close the spline. Now, if you can imagine, if I'm looking at a doorknob from the side view, this is what the top half of that would look like. Um, I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to modify panel. Um, and I'm going to lay that so I can hit the L key on my keyboard, go to the modify panel, look for lathe, and that's great. Uh, Whoops, the direction here is probably going to be on X because we're looking left to right. Um, but unfortunately, that's probably going to be centered. So I probably have to go either minimum or maximum. Uh, or I might just have to grab it. So you can sort of see this is kind of the right direction. I have a cylinder going that way, but it's not lathing on the right axis for me. So all I have to do is go up to my modified panel lathe and then open up the axis sub-object. Go to the move tool and drag it down, and there it is. This is my um, doorknob from a side view, and that looks pretty awesome. Um, then I can turn off the sub-object, and I'm gonna scale this down. So I'm just gonna go right away to my scale tool, and uh, I'm gonna make it appropriate size, 
and I'm going to move it to the appropriate place. Uh, that might even be still a little bit big. Okay, and really the only important thing that we have to do here is we have to link it up um, so that it, it follows the door. So I'm just going to switch to my perspective viewport for a second. So I'll, uh, I'll get out of my, my full view and um, whoa, look at that. I guess when I was scaling, I, I didn't exactly do the right thing. Let me just back up for a second. Um, I, I suppose a good lesson was learned there. Um, let me just redo that. So my, 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 my doorknob looks beautiful um, from all views, but when I scaled it down, I, I didn't scale it on one axis, and that's never a good idea. So I'm going to just scale it right there. There we go. Now I can see how big it is. Very nice. And I'm going to move it. Again, it doesn't matter which viewports you work in as long as you know where you are. And uh, I'll put it right there. Now, of course, we, we're going to need a matching doorknob for the other side. And uh, there we go. I've got that one right there. So um, I'm just going to move into my left viewport. I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm going to drag a matching one right over there. And beautiful. Now, last thing I want to do is, of course, I would name these things and do some other good things. Um, but of course, if these are doorknobs and I move my door, right now they're not moving, right? Uh, and that's no good. So what I have to do is I have to link them up so that um, um, my doorknobs follow my doors um, or vice versa. Um, however, since we've already made a pivot point for the door, um, we can cheat a little bit. And in order to open the door, uh, we're not going to grab the knob. We're going to grab the door and the knob will follow. Again, we're not making architecturally perfect things here. We just want them to look right and sort of be able to work right. So what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm just going to do a select and link. Uh, I'm going to grab the child, which is the knob, and I'm going to link it to the door, which is the parent, and uh, hopefully that works. And I'm going to grab the child, which is the knob, and link it to the door, which is the parent, and hopefully that works. And uh, I'll just double check here. I'll just grab my, grab my door, and yep, the knob follows. And uh, grab my other door, and yep, the knob follows. Um, again, there's probably a bunch of other ways I could do these things, but... Um, uh, that one seemed to work out reasonably well. Okay, uh, we could make very similar uh, handles by, uh, uh, sorry, feet by doing the, uh, uh, the feet in the same lathe style. We could maybe make a little piece along the top. We could put some wine glasses in there, all made with a lathe. Okay, so this is part two of the uh, very simple China cabinet tutorial. Uh, hopefully this gives you a few tools that you can start playing with, make your own stuff. Check back for more tutorials later on. See you later.